Guards of Atlantis 2, the sequel to the original game Guards of Atlantis by Wolf Design. It's by Artem Nikimperov, and it does play the same amount of players, two or more players. The game takes about 90 minutes to play, ages 12, 13, and up. And in the game Guards of Atlantis, the second edition, of course, you're going to be playing a MOBA. A MOBA is a multiplayer online battle arena. Similar to games like League of Legends or uh, the one made by Blizzard, there's Dota as well, those classic arcade games where you have towers, you have minions, and then you choose your character. And as you choose your character, you try to push the minions uh, that are the enemies away. And your minions will then get pushed further along. If you defeat towers, your minions will get stronger. And if you bust into the enemy base, you can destroy their main tower and win the game. This game functions very similarly to those computer style games, but it's made for a board game uh, audience. Now what happens is you're going to be getting a character and the character is going to have his own specific board with his own unique deck of cards. And you're going to be playing down these cards simultaneously with everybody else, arranging them based on initiative order, dropping them down in turns, finishing off a round, defeating other players' minions as well as their characters. You can win in three different fashions. A, you can push your minions into your opponent's base, or you can remove all the respawn tokens a player has. And then the last one is, as a minion wave pushes, you're going to remove a wave token, and if the last one gets removed, the game will just end, and the person or players who push that last wave in whatever direction will win the game of Guards of Atlantis 2. Now, in this game, it has a ton of additional content. There is a ton of extra characters. I do have the base game here, so I could have I took a look to see the little bit of the differences and the changes, and all the extras have added to this game that I am now explaining to you right now that'll be on Kickstarter. So we'll go down below. I'll show all the components and all the stuff that they gave me to show you for just for the prototype alone and all the miniatures included and then we'll talk about how to play the game i'll give you a good rough uh, estimate of how you're going to be taking your turns and what the characters do and then we'll come up and discuss my review of this game uh, and along with the base game as well so here we have guards of atlantis 2 and this game has a lot more characters than the original game in the original game guards of atlantis you actually open it up and I can actually show you all the miniatures included, and there's this little stack of them that I apparently dropped, so they're all kind of huddled here. But basically, I think there's about eight to ten characters with an expansion uh, for this base game here. And in this one here, all these decks of cards are different characters. And so you're going to basically be choosing one of all of these guys here. I have the game set up for... Uh, two slash four players. The game recommends four, but you can play this game at two players or more, which each player controls one character or a player can control multiple characters. And then, of course, you're going to have the minions. Minions are basically mindless monsters that are not necessarily going to work with you, but they will provide certain advantages to attacking and defending if you are adjacent to them. So when you select a character, you'll also be selecting a deck of cards, and each character has their own unique deck of, I think, 18 cards. And each of the decks is going to contain tiered cards. You'll start with the two basic tiers, and then you'll start with the two basic cards, and then all the tier ones, and you'll make it by a hand of comprised of five cards, in which you're going to be then playing cards down on the table here. So you're going to be selecting one of these boards as well, based on the character you chose. So if, for instance, you got Brogan the Destroyer, you'll find the character based on what it looks like here in the middle. And then you're also gonna look at the symbol here. So in this case with Brogan, he's got an ax with a sword, which is this one over here. And you'll simply go ahead and take both of those things along with the character. You're also then going to go ahead and select the base color for your specific base, which in this case is going to be orange. And then you'll have your friend choose a character as well. Luckily the expand, the, the, the game itself will provide specific characters you can choose from to where you can start playing the game before you get into the more advanced characters. Some of them are definitely more advanced than others and require a little bit more understanding of the game before simply jumping into it. When setting up, you're also going to take all of your characters, all your little minions, and place them on the board where they specifically say to. There's going to be four of your basically melee, there'll be one ranged minion, and then you're also going to have a heavy, and the enemy will do the exact same thing. Also, depending on the game mode, you're going to be selecting respawn tokens. In this case, I have four for blue and I have four for orange. If those go away and you're starting to respawn characters, you can lose the game that way. There's also going to be wave tokens based on the game, I believe, which is four for the basic. 
if these run out, you will also end the game and the players or player or players who move the last minion wave will win the game this way. And then the other way you win the game is simply by pushing this wave from here to here and from here to here or vice versa. The team that pushes the enemy minion or the wave into one of the bases will trigger the end of the game and victory will be for the other side, the side who was the aggressive side and push them along. And that's pretty much the entire setup of the game. You won't be using any of this stuff here. It's all going to be taken off. All the decks that you're not using are going to be set aside as well. Have your money set near uh, the board here because as you defeat minions and players, you're going to be gaining money, which will let you upgrade using cards in your deck to advance your ability to do certain things. And all the extra player boards, as well as tokens you may not be using because there's a multitude of different unique tokens for the different characters in the game, set those aside as well. And then you're ready to begin playing the game Guards of Atlantis. Two, if you played the original, this has a lot of the similar features, but we'll talk about a couple of the differences down below, as well as all the different characters and how they function. Not all of them, but a few of them. So you get the idea of the changes in this game and the previous one, and then we'll come up and I'll discuss my review. So as an example of play, I just went ahead and set aside two player boards with two player decks. But as you can see, there are four different characters and or heroes or champions, whatever you want to call them. And so there will be actually four as opposed to just the two. But I have Sabina over here and she looks kind of like a female gangplank, if you know who she he, who he is from League of Legends, hanging out right there. And then we've also got Brogan the Destroyer, who is this big baddie right here. Now there are two other ones here, which will function just like these. These two, but just so you guys get an idea of how the game functions, I'm just going to have you just use these two as well as their decks, which I went ahead and set aside. All of the tier four, three, and two cards should all be set aside next to you so you can use them for a later time. And then you're also going to have your basic cards, which are going to be the ones without symbols here, and all of them that have a one on them, which is basically tier one for both players, which means in this case, you're going to have five cards in hand, and you will never not have more or or less than five cards in your hand at the beginning of the round. However, you will be playing them down as the turns progress throughout the game. Another unique and interesting aspect to this game is as you choose characters, they're going to have stat bars, and these stat bars are going to represent their abilities. Like, do you want a really powerful attacker or a really powerful defender? Brogan might be your good choice. However, as far as timing goes or as far as speed goes, super slow and abilities and skills are not so great. Sabina, on the other hand, pretty strong attacker, not the greatest defense, but the skills and the movement are okay. And and if I do remember correctly, this little wave gal here, she is actually very maneuverable and has a lot of unique abilities as well. Regardless though, I've got my characters chose to set them in one of the three positions here. I went ahead and took in this coin and I'm going to flip it and that will determine who is going to win in ties, at least for the time being. I then will look at the places on the board and distinguish between the melee spots, the heavy spot, and the range spot for each side and set them up so that they are actually... Uh, equal in spacing and how you place the car these guys down here and make sure you put bases on for each of them the way you tell the difference between them are you have the mechanical blue and then you have the crystalline orange minions for each player no winning starts with any money but you place it aside anyway you got your different uh tokens here that are going to be used for respawning place them down based on the game mode based on how many you need and then if your characters have any unique tokens or tile or terrain or the game mode requires it go ahead and use those as well now game on we're pretty much ready to go there's not a whole lot to discuss how this game functions because it's very very easy everybody's going to take a card they're going to then place that card down in on the board and then they're going to simultaneously reveal them so in this case, they have each selected one card. Everyone is going to reveal their cards, regardless of how many players it is. And then you're going to check your initiative. And the way you check initiative is the top left-hand number. Whoever has the highest is the winner. But there are unique things that change that based on what items you'll get throughout the game or any other bonuses your characters may or may not have. In this case, we have a 9 compared to a 4, so the 9 is going to get to go first. If there was ever a tie in initiative, you'll come down to this marker. If the tie is between two separate teams, the, the team that has this marker flipped to their side will actually go ahead and go first, and then it will flip so that the next tie will go to the next team. However, if you're tied with your own teammate, you're simply going to go ahead and choose who gets to enact their ability first before the other player does. Then you'll leave this marker alone. So this here has got Vicious Jab, and we're going to be playing for Brogan over here. And Brogan says that he can go ahead and move two spaces. He can use this card as a defense of six 
or he can use this specific skill, which says push an adjacent enemy up to two spaces. And in this case, we only get to choose one specific action. Defense, movement, or skill. And defense is actually a unique action, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But regardless, he's going to go ahead and move two spaces. There's no line of sight issues in the game, and you're allowed to move anywhere you want as long as you're avoiding these immovable ter terrain spaces, as well as enemy and... Um, allied minions and characters so he moved his two and now we're going to go ahead and look over here at sabina sabina's got a two movement as well so she would go ahead and move as well if we had two other cards for the other players they would also go ahead and move and maybe she would move three spaces and this one here she maybe move five because her cards are pretty powerful in which case after that everybody's cards have been utilized you're gonna go ahead and take these cards and place them on the turn one space then everybody will once again place another card down and then everyone will then again resolve. And that's basically the entire game. You're just gonna be going and flipping these over, deciding what abilities you wanna use after looking at the initiative, letting the player go ahead and do certain things. Like for instance, this one here is gonna let this person move three spaces. One, two, three. This person will move three spaces as well. One, two, three. And then place over here. Now, what's going to eventually happen is these characters are going to get into range inside this, like, I guess you want to call it, like, the middle area of the board, the battle zone, to where they're then going to be able to start doing some unique actions. And also, when everybody has finished playing four of their five cards, there's going to be a unique step or a unique phase before everybody gets their cards back. So if this was the end of the round, everybody played these four cards and everybody managed to get into these positions, what's going to happen is unique to, to this game. A, you are going to check to see if enemy or allied minions move. And sometimes they'll get pushed around. So what happens is you're gonna bring them back to the main area of the board in the closest area. So these minions are going to get pushed around, pulled around and whatnot. And in, in fact, if that happens, they'll be pushed back to the closest area. If there's a tie, you can go ahead and simply choose. After that, they're then going to go ahead and fight. And the way fighting minions work is pretty simple. There in general are six minions to start the game off with in a specific given area. However, if there is a difference in minions, then the enemy side that is losing, or the, the side that is losing, is going to reduce the amount of minions by the difference. So in this case, if I had this one blue guy who had been removed from the game or basically been terminated, you have a six versus a five. So orange is winning by one, which means that blue will have to remove one of their minions. And that's a very important aspect of the game because that's how, how pushing is going to happen. Now, pushing is something that allows this minion wave uh, to move in one of the two directions available on the board. If there are no minions left on the board, then a push will happen. And a push is going to let you move your minions uh, based on the enemy or allied team and whoever has the minions left. So if, for instance, all these minions had been destroyed, there's a push. These minions are the only ones that are left. All of the minions will push over here. And if it happens again, the minions will push over here and the orange team would win, right? So that is very, very important to how minions will function. Another unique thing about minions, other than the fact that they actually provide some defense and uh, action uh, and uh, aggressive, uh, I guess, uh, attack aspects, is that you cannot defeat the heavy minion, which is one of these guys here, until you defeated all other minions in the board or on the board. If that's the case, then when this guy finally falls, then it will trigger a push automatically, regardless of if it's in this phase or during the actual gameplay of the game. So that being said, after you check to see if the enemy minions, uh, they, if they move, they attack, and then decide if they push or not, then players will level up. And the way that people level up is pretty simple. If you defeat a champion or you defeat a minion, you're gonna gain gold. And when you defeat a champion, what's cool is your team will actually gain gold as well. And you're going to gain gold based on the highest tiered card in their deck. Your enemy, your, the, your allies are going to gain gold based on their lowest tiered card. So if their lowest tiered card is one and you have two allies, they're both going to gain one gold. If you defeat a small minion, you're going to gain two gold. And if you defeat a larger one, you'll gain three or four. And then you're going to check to see if you can level up. And the way you level up is on the side of these boards here. So if I go ahead and take one of these guys here and get nice and close for you, it'll show you that level one is where you start or tier one is where you start. When you want to upgrade one of your tier ones to a tier two, you'll spend one gold and then two and then three. Then after all your cards are tiered two, you can go to tier three. And then finally, if all your cards are tiered three, you can go to your ultimate, which is a passive ability you just gain. Also, you when you go ahead and select a card to upgrade, what's very interesting about that as well is if you chose elevate, which is a tier two card, 
pretty good. You'll take the other card that's tier two in the deck that you could have chose. You're going to flip that over, and then you're going to add that as a specific defense or initiative, whatever it is, as an item on your board. And in this case, it says plus one defense. So you go ahead and put this on your board. You'll take your level tier one level card blue that's there. You'll go ahead and get rid of that, and then you'll trade it in for the one that you want. And that's how you level up. You can do that as many times as you have money for. And then after leveling up is done, everybody will get their cards back. So you're going to get all the cards back that you played, as well as the ones that you upgraded. So now you got your five cards. If you didn't level up because you didn't have any money, you get a pity coin. So if this player in this case would get just one pity coin because he or she did not level up, take your cards back and then begin the round again. And the game will just continue going on like that. You'll be gaining new items, you'll be gaining new abilities, you're going to be trying to defeat enemy minions, as well as defeating enemy champions. If you do defeat a champion, they're going to go back to one of their starting positions, they're going to lose a respawn token, and the game will continue like that. However, there is another unique thing too. Let's say, for instance, all the minions and all the characters were all over here, right? And this poor and suspecting soul gets destroyed, right? And sent all the way back. She will have to respawn, there's some certain rules for respawning. But another unique, interesting aspect to this game is travel. You can do a fast travel movement in a game, and if you can, if you want to, you can simply move in any adjacent space or your own space by spinning a card, as long as there are no enemy minions or enemy champions, as well as a couple other little small rules. But it can allow you to travel in one turn all the way over there. But be careful how you use the fast travel, and remember they're limited, so it can be very beneficial to get you far enough onto the map. The games are rather quick though, so you're probably only going to need to use it once anyway. But regardless, that's basically the idea of Guards of Atlantis. If you can push the minion wave into one of your into your opponent's base, you can win that way. If the players run out of the respawn tokens, that will end. As well as whenever you push an enemy minion wave one way or another, one of these spawn tokens will get removed. And if there are no none left, when the last one is simply left and the wave gets pushed, the team that did the pushing, which would be blue in this case, would simply win the game as well. Pretty quick, stylish little mobile with a ton of characters. Let's come up and talk about it. I didn't talk about attacking, unfortunately, but I can go over that really quickly. Here's how it works. You will play your card. You'll choose the attack action as opposed to any of the other actions. And if you're within range and it's a minion, the minion will die and you will gain points. You cannot defeat a larger slash heavy minion until you defeat all other minions of the medium and small variety before you can go ahead and knock that one out, which in that case will trigger a wave push and you'll get coins based on whether it's a heavy or whether it's on a basic minion uh, additionally when you fight a player what's going to happen is you'll say i'm going to use my attack action in, and it is your current turn it's your initiative and then they will have an opportunity if they can to discard a card from their hand and use the defense value on that card to protect them from an attack if your attack is higher than their defense then you will simply defeat them and they will have to get respawned if your attack is lower than their defense, the attack fizzles and their card gets discarded anyway. Which leads me to my first thing about the game, is when you get attacked multiple times in this game, you'll have to be discarding cards to prevent those attacks from going through. If your defense is constantly higher, you're going to be fine. However, eventually, if your defense is no longer high enough to defend yourself, your character will get pushed and sent back to the spawn point. You can do some hyper-aggressive gaming aspects in this game if you so choose. And doing that will also reduce the amount of cards in a player's hand, not allowing them to play more cards down on their turns, which is my one main gripe in the game. I wish that there was a basic action or a basic card you could keep that would count as a defense, attack, slash movement card that's very, very, like, not very good, but at least it lets you do it on your turns when you actually have no cards left because you've been sitting there dealing with an onslaught of attacks going against you constantly. Because when you have no cards in your hand and it's the round where you're placing cards down to flip them over, you can't do anything. You're just going to sit there. And that's not the greatest. That's not fun because you're going to be losing turns. Despite that, though, I understand why they did it. Because you're then going to be having to decide if you want to use your two main attack cards as the enemy on the other player you can kind of like determine oh well do i want to use these cards it will not let me do a specific type of action whether it be a skill or a movement and also i can't be defeating minions if i'm attacking the players which in turn there are three different ways to win the game so necessarily you're not going to win by actually defeating characters and it might be better to push uh push the minions but 
there are certain instances where attacking a player might be more beneficial because it can push them back and slow them from being able to defeat your minions uh, in the minion wave when you need to make that final push and maybe they've run out of their movements or fast actions they, they are not able to get back into the game. You can also choose to not discard a card and so then you can still use your cards during the round uh, but you have to go back and get respawned which is also difficult you're like oh do i want to discard this card and i have uh, or do i want to go all the way back and start pushing my way back and so you do have a lot of choice in this game now it's just a specific gripe for me personally it's not that there's a problem with it in the game it's just that you have to kind of determine how you want to do a certain thing and i always like the idea of having an action if i can available so that i can do something on a turn as opposed to choosing to take a better action to then not take an action ah, that makes sense or not all right Let's talk about the positives for the game. First of all, component quality is excellent. This is a prototype. All of the miniatures, except for the minions, which are from the base game, are prototypes, and they look really good. There are a ton of different characters. Each of the characters has their own unique deck, and they feel different. The characters all have their own unique upgrades, abilities, and items that all change the way the game is played based on the characters that you choose. It does feel like you're playing a standard game of League of Legends or Dota, in which case you're pushing minion waves. But minions are not complicated, which is nice as well. When the round is over, the minions will move, they will attack, and then they may push. That's it. That's all they do. And then you'll go back to playing the round again. You're going to make, make these games really quick and you can continuously play the game if you want, uh, setting this game up to be even shorter if the players are veteran players. So if they know what they're doing and how they want to move, the first round of the game is simply going to be pushing into the middle there. And then afterwards, the decision making of how you want to play your cards, what actions you want to use, and then do you want to change those actions based on the initiative order of your opponent's cards so, for instance, if you wanted to blast a minion, right, and then your opponent, for some reason, killed their own minion, which can actually happen in the game, you can't really do that action anymore. So you're going to actually lose out on getting those coins. So maybe you want to use a skill in your card, which allows you to push one of your own minions back. And so you can kind of finagle your cards to loosely be able to use two different things if one thing happens. So it's never best laid plans like a like a, a game in which it's like a mechanical game where I want to move forward but unfortunately they blocked my path beforehand and now I can't. This one will still give you options after you've played the cards which is really cool. The leveling up system is very easy and it's very quick once you understand the characters and I strongly suggest that you allow every player in the game to look at every player's upgrades and or cards in their deck so you have an idea of what each of those characters can do because after the first game you're going to know which will put somebody else at a disadvantage who's already played with those previous characters otherwise though the combat works great the movement feels nice uh this is an aggressive game in which case you will have to deal with players trying to be aggressive towards you and if you don't like miniature games that are aggressive that play in a team style fashion or one-on-one -on -one, which I don't know if it says you can play two players in the game, but I know you can. You just have to simply play two players, two characters for each player, and you'd be just fine. And you just play cards down simultaneously. I, I don't see an issue with it, but it's up to you whether you want to do that or not. All the artwork in the game is excellent. The board and all the components are really cool. The fact that they've introduced a ton of new characters, a ton of new items that can be attached uh, throughout the game, or, or these little tokens here that involve different train pieces and whatnot, and game modes. Uh, I've only played just one of the types of game modes available, as well as only one of the maps. They may include multiple maps in the game, I'm not too sure, but what I can say that it's currently here, with what is here, there is a ton of content with a ton of replayability. You're never going to fight the same battle twice, even when playing with the same characters, and you're always going to cons consistently get better as you play the game Guards of Atlantis, number two. Uh, the first one, however, I just mainly went through the rules and looked looked through them because I was mainly focused on playing this one here. I want to see the differences, and there are some unique differences to the games, whether based on the, how the minions function. Because in this game, if you're next to a minion when you're a uh, friendly minion when you're being attacked, you can gain some defense. Or when you're next to a range unit and you're attacking at a range on an enemy, if they're within two spaces away, they do damage. There's certain minion things. What I'm saying. And this one I don't think there is, as well as uh, there are certain rules regarding the first two turns of play. There is a more higher cost to upgrading or to leveling up, and in this one it's a lot cheaper. And the boards are definitely different as to how they look and feel. These ones each have their own unique artwork with their own unique uh, characters attached to them, uh, which is really nice.
really nice. Especially because then you can see which decks go with which characters. Because there's so many characters in the games that function so differently. I'd love to go into a lot of detail talking about the different characters and how they play. But I'll simply just go ahead and say that some of them are faster, some of them are slower, some of them have defense, some of them drop turrets down, some of them are able to function based on how well you position them on the board. And I know that sounds weird, but if they're next to a rock, or if they're next to the water, or if they're next to minion spaces, there are certain characters that can do certain things based on where they're placed and how they fit, as well as, of course, the range of certain characters can be better, but of course, uh, can, can be better than others, but of course the ones that are melee are going to do some serious kick butt when they get really close. As the, the skills and abilities progress, they get super hyper powerful for instance let's just talk about the ultimate for this last character here this is brogon he's a he turns into a warlord where he just sets it aside when in a battle zone every friendly minion in radius counts as two minions during minion combat that's so good and all of them are so good it always feels good to upgrade because you're always getting something better you're never getting something that you don't necessarily want it's always going to be more and more and more so regardless that's the basic idea for the game that's my thoughts on the game i highly enjoyed this game and my only conflict was the fact that i don't like doing nothing and sometimes that can happen if you get attacked too many times overall this is a great moba style game because it's so quick and so easy to teach and so easy to play and i strongly suggest you take a look at it if you like miniatures if you like moba games and you want something that's not too time consuming but with a ton of different characters to play from thank you guys so much for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review and of course this one there's a lot to talk about which was interesting because the game's not actually that complex, but because there's so much stuff you can choose from before the game begins, it gives it that ability to be more complex of a game if you want it to be. And the last thing I wanted to just, I want a little quick, quick thing, the artwork is so good. And the fact that all the player boards have different artwork, so good, so good. I love that. I love the fact that it attaches with the cards so you know which card decks. It made the setup a lot quicker than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, also, check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, tons of blog posts. We do do giveaways. We'll have one up actually this week. As well as go and check out our Kickstarter list to tell you all the new Kickstarter games online, as well as the Game Guards of Atlantis. And I think there was another one, uh, Emerald Tournament, that'll be up as well for review this week. Uh, go ahead and check out our live streams every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST, up to about 9.30. We do games. We're going to be giving away the game Yaks this week, this Wednesday here. And if you want to join us, participate. We give away games free every week live, and you can win as well. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. As always, I look forward to playing a mobile with you online or in board game form with you next time.